Not today, Baba. Go get him, Baba. Love you. Not today, Baba. Just Gordy, Gordy, can I bother you for a second? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, gentlemen and ladies, this is indeed episode 96. The Burnley Dump Show on Big Game Bob coming to you on your local airwaves. However you're listening, why ever you're listening, we're just happy you are indeed listening, folks. Let's just cut the bullshit. Let's get right down to it. Jersey Jerry scratching and clawing for his own segment on the Berlin Lead Dumb Show. He's got to get 7 out of 10. Now, Jersey Jerry wanted to do this after the Steelers game. He said, Bobby, I want to record Monday night after the Steelers game. I said, Jerry, your wish is my demand with the way you've been pumping numbers. People are loving Jersey Jerry. He is taking the Brill and Dumb show by storm. However, he's looking at one and three. The Pittsburgh Steelers has just won. I'm sure he's going to be coming in very hot. The Steelers have just beat the Giants. They have covered the spread. They won by 10. Jersey Jerry now has to get five more picks in a row. We're going to offer him a little specialty bonus point if he wants to take the offer. It's going to have a downside as well. I'm going to throw it to him, Adam, on the show. If he wants to take it, by all means. If not, he doesn't have to. Whatever he wants to play it could be a risk as well. We're going to throw that his way. Anywho, without further ado, let's bring him on. <laughs> Gerard Gilfone, are you with us? Ju- Holy shit. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Jerry, I don't know what you're wearing. What are you wearing? What are you eating, Jerry? You're eating too? I'm celebrating a big win, Bobby. <laughs> oh. I'm a Cinnabon from my favorite place. What is that, Jerry? I mean, a Cinnabon from my favorite place. Where's it from? I, I sent you the picture yesterday. Stu Leonard's. The grocery <laughs> store. Oh. Well, here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Here he is. He's two and three. He's got to get five more in a row. How about them Pittsburgh Steelers, Jersey Jerry? You know what I love about this? I watched Big Ben knock off the rust in the third quarter. The rust is gone now. The rust is gone. Didn't I tell you this defense would show up third, fourth quarter? I told you that. Let them get the first two quarters underneath their belt, and then they're going to explode. They made big stops, big turnovers in the red zone. This is what this team does here. This is what they do. Jerry, this this is what scares me a little bit. Now, I am happy. I'm riding the high just as you are right now, which Mm -hmm. scares me a little. By the way, Jerry, what what are you wearing? What is that? That's my my farmer's vest. It's a farmer's vest? Yeah. um, You hear that around the house, Jerry? No, no, I got I to gotta head somewhere in about 15, 20. So Jesus, I'm, Jerry. I'm okay, now what, what concerns me here, Jer, I don't want you to get ahead of yourself because the bottom line is the lifelines are done. Yeah. One more loss and that's it, and it's over. Yeah. And that's why I was a little concerned about recording tonight. But look, again, like I said earlier, your wish is my demand at this point, yep. Jerry. What you say goes until you lose your segment. You're still feeling? Yeah, I know. Who's that, Jer? It's my, it's my mom. You need to take it? Go ahead, but take it. No, no. Take it, Jerry. She's friggin' rushing me right now. Where you go? Jesus, Jerry. It's a pit. Doesn't she know the Steelers just won? Yeah, that's the problem. She wants to head out now. Why? Something. It's a tradition. My, 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 it's my grandfather's tradition. But what is that, now, Jerry? I take it over. What is that, Jerry? After, ste- what, after the Steelers win? No, it's... It's, it's something. What's the, tra- well, what's the tradition, Jerry? I don't want to from- talk about it much, but what, whatever. Listen, my grandfather, as you know, passed away. Joe Tears? Joe Tears passed away a few years back. Rest in peace, Joe Tears. Now, it was our tradition that we would get early access to a pumpkin patch every single year, which opens up the 15th of September. You know, I don't, I don't see what's funny here, Bob. <laughs> I, just, I just have no, I have no idea where you're going with this right now. We're talking about the Steelers. Yeah, I know. Is but, this leading somewhere? Yeah, it is. Okay, all right. I sent all you the right. picture yesterday. Don't you remember the picture I sent you yesterday? Send me a picture of you at a grocery store, Jer. That's the grocery store I'm talking about. But what, what, but that's the thing, Jer. I didn't know what to say to that. You sent me a picture of you at a grocery store. I didn't. Well, you didn't say anything. I didn't well, you didn't know. respond. 
I didn't know what to respond. You didn't say anything. I figured it was a picture of me with the apple cider. I figured you'd say, oh, that looks good or something. <laughs> oh, no. All right, go ahead. What's the tradition? Anyway, it was a tradition of my grandfather's. Every year he would slip Ernesto a $100 bill to give us free access to the pumpkin patch, early access. Now, now I since had to take that over. Now, Ernesto's in on this. Who is Ernesto? Ernesto's the guy who runs the patch, the pumpkin patch. Every year on the 15th, the patch opens. But you got hundreds of kids and families going there. My grandfather had a deal going with this guy where we would slip him 100. That's why I went to the grocery store yesterday. I needed to remind Ernesto that I'd be coming tonight. And now my mom's rushing me to go. You don't have no family traditions. <laughs> Hold on. He's paying, he's paying the guy who works the pumpkin patch. Joe Tears used to pay the guy who works the pumpkin patch. Yeah, he would slip him 100. Yeah, okay. <laughs> to what? To go on to the pumpkin patch early? Yeah, we get first dibs on the pumpkins. That's the whole point of this. But does all it the mean that much gone. to you to get first dibs on the pumpkins? Okay, let me ask you something. You ever go to a pumpkin patch after it's been open a week or two? You ain't getting a good pumpkin here. You're getting pumpkins with broken stems, pumpkins with holes in them, <laughs> rabbits been eating them. Jerry, so you awesome. tell me, you, let me get this straight. Okay, forget the picks, forget the Steelers. You just took us on a total different direction. You need to tell me that the Gill phones show up at a pumpkin patch. What time is it over there, Jerry? Right now it's 1020. What time are you supposed to be meet Ernesto for the pumpkin patch? 11 o'clock. It's about 45 minutes away. But I told my mom, I said, you got to give me a couple minutes here. So the Gill phones go over to a pumpkin patch. You give this Ernesto $100 to get free picking at your pumpkins? Yeah, he gives us an hour. <laughs> you know, listen, I'm, <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, this is why I didn't want to tell the story, man. This <laughs> no, I, people think, it, people <laughs> think, you know, like, like it's a joke. Like people don't have family traditions. People eat pasta every Sunday. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How many pumpkins do you get to pick out of the app? What do you take a hundred pumpkins? No, no, we don't, we don't take advantage because we want to keep our nest on, on the deal. You know what I mean? We don't want to jeopardize his job here. <laughs> Jerry, it's like, it's like something out of the Sopranos, man. It's every, it's, it's always something new. Why can't you just go the first day and pick your pumpkin? You clearly missed the point here. What I'm saying is if you go to a pumpkin patch and, and you go a day, two days, a week late, you are not getting a good pumpkin out here in New Jersey. That's just how it works. Uh, and this Ernesto that you give the money to, he's in on it. He knows? Yeah, that's why I went to the store yesterday. I say, you know, Ernesto, tomorrow's the day. You know what I mean? <laughs> all right. All right. Enough, enough, enough with the pumpkin patch, all right? Jesus. Talk to me, Jerry. You're two for three right now. That is, a, let me tell you, Jerry, that's a massive win. Now, here's what I want to throw at you. Mm -hmm. okay? Got a little trick up my sleeve. You okay. love to call into these radio shows, right? It's what you do. Yeah. When's the last yeah. time you called into the radio show, Jerry? Two weeks ago. How long did it take you? To get through? Yeah. About an hour. How long would you say you average once they take you and you're on the show? How long do you say you average? I, I would say I average about anywhere between. Before they hang up on you, that is. Before they hang up. Okay, so because sometimes I, I, I get a little snappy. I get a little hot. Well, uh, well, 30, 30 seconds for... to a minute. 30 seconds to a minute. Okay, here's why I like this, okay? New York, New Jersey radio, it's a different beast. Here's what I want to throw at you. You're two and three right now. You got to hit five straight in a row for your own segment. What I want to yeah. offer you, Jerry, I would give you two topics, Okay give you two topics to call into a radio show of your choice it's got to be a big one so that i can record it while it's happening so it's got to be a michael k show it's got to be something big to where i could record it we could have some type of audio for the folks and i can I make sure i'm judging the over i'm gonna yeah. give you an over under of how long you could last with one of these topics if you hit the over you win Okay. If you hit the O, if, if you go under, you lose. That's it. That's the end of the segment. Segment's I give, done. I give you two ridiculous topics. Okay. And I'm going to put the over at 51 seconds. Would you like to hear the two topics I would give you before you decide if you want to do it? 
yeah, fifty one seconds ain't bad. I could I now you could do a long build up, that. whatever you gotta do. They're gonna be two pretty ridiculous topics. All right, how ridiculous are you talking, though? <laughs> I mean, it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to be pretty ridiculous. I'm not going to make it some easy cakewalk here, Jerry, because you'll get a point if you do win. It'll count as a win. Okay. Here's the two topics. You ready? Okay, First topic, that you have the option to debate to last over 51 seconds or on a show of your choice. Mm-hmm. Got to be a big show. Okay. Gordon Hayward, you have to make a case. <laughs> yeah, make a case for Gordon Hayward being a top 10 NBA player. <laughs> what? It sounds like you're throwing me under the bus here. Well, Jerry, Jerry, look, I'm not going to make it a cakewalk. You got to right, well, go I'm just coming off a win here. It sounds like, you know, you're Jerry, just going to make me you lose don't have to take it. You don't have to take it. You ready for your second option? At least hear it out. Go ahead. Here's where you may have something. Big Ben Roethlisberger had a good little game today. Now, nobody's saying he's back okay. yet. Maybe besides you, I think it'd be okay. ridiculous to say that he is back. What okay. you can do, the other option, you have the Gordon Hayward option to yeah. argue that he's a top 10 player in the league. Or you can argue that Big Ben Roethlisberger is a top five quarterback right now in the National Football League over under 51 seconds. Jerry, if you want to take it, by all means, take it. If you don't want to take it, you do not have to take it. Okay. No problem. No problem. I'm going to decide, you know, which one I'm going to pick. You know, I haven't made my mind up yet, though. But, Jerry, you got – but hold on, Jerry. Hold on. Here's the problem. We need another – we need another pick if you're not going to take it. So you either take it with one of the options you want, or we go back to just picking a game, which we will do. It's the one bonus play we'll give you. No, no, I'll, I'll take the radio show. You're going. Oh, you're going to take it. Oh, I thought you were yeah. going to say that. <laughs> no, I'm going to take the. I'm going to take the show here. The radio show calling. <laughs> so Jerry, here's what we're going to do. I thought you said you were going to go back to the games by no. Friday. This is going to be a one-time thing by Friday. You have to call into a nationwide radio show. Let me know when you do it so that I could record it. Okay. You have to last for over 51 seconds from the time they take you, making your argument that Big Ben Roethlisberger right now is a top five quarterback. Is that the one you want, or do you want to go Gordon Hayward? Nah, I'm going to go Roethlisberger here. I mean, the Gordon Hayward one is kind of disrespectful. It sounds like you're trying to get me off the show, which I don't appreciate. <laughs> You know, it you don't is got, it is. Jerry, hey, it's so your you, show. It's your show. You don't got to take it. Well, it couldn't turn into your show. You do want to take the Big Ben Roethlisberger, or do you want to take the pick? No, I'm going Big Ben. I'm going Big Okay. Ben. So you're going to call into a nationwide radio of your choice, Sports Talk Radio. Yeah. Let me know so I can record it, get video, some type of footage. Last over 51 seconds, okay? And you would be three for three. You would still have to hit four straight on, on mainstream coming picks. Gotcha. Okay. Got Good you. deal? Good deal. I'll let you go pumpkin picking, which, by the way, is absolutely outrageous. <laughs> well, that's your opinion. <laughs> Jerry, it's a, it's, it's a little weird. <laughs> I mean, I don't see how it's weird. I mean, <laughs> you don't go golfing with your parents? like that's We don't stupid. pay off the starter $100 to get our first choice of what tea we're going to come on, Jerry. Look, I respect that. I respect the family tradition. You keep the show moving along. Jerry, we are pulling for you. I love you to death. There's nobody me, who wants to. Let me ask you a question, Buck. Let me ask you a question. Anything. Did you think I was done? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Seriously, did you think I was done? When the Giants scored the opening touchdown, I did, Jerry. I, I concur. I admit. You know, I got a lot of message saying that I was done. It was dead. Listen, when my back's up against the wall, <laughs> that's when I shine the best. I'm just letting you know that, so you know. <laughs> I didn't know you were done there, Jay. <laughs> All right, you're going to leave it at that. All right, folks, there you have it. Jersey Jerry coming in hot for episode 96. His Steelers win. He has a bonus play option that's going to be coming up. Look, could be scrutinized for taking that. If they hang up on you before, it is all over. He's going to call a nationwide radio show. That's just what we do, the unpredictable here on the Brilliant Up Show. Jerry, we'll see you Friday. Start calling. You got to let me know before you call. I will. I'll let you know, Bob. Calling away. We love you, buddy. And, Jerry, we trust. <laughs> Bye. You know, I tell you, folks, as we all know, it's a very cold world out there and and I got to tell you somebody who I find to be very cold and to be quite frank a bit of a dick and it's something that we've never really spoken about really on the planet at all has anybody been at a traffic light recently 
Because I got an issue with the guy, when you're a walking pedestrian, I got an issue with the guy who created the traffic light. You know how they have that big old yellow button that tells you to click when you need to cross the street? But then the thing's the biggest dick when you do click the yellow button that when you finally do need to walk across, you click it, and it's so rude. You hear that thing? It just goes, wait, wait. You click that yellow button, wait. What do you mean, wait? I, all right, I'm waiting. I clicked you one time. You don't have to tell me to wait three times. You know that traffic light, that button you click? You click it one time. It tells you to wait three times. Wait, wait, wait. It's like, dude, I clicked the button one fucking time. You don't got to tell me three times. You could have just told me once. I'm waiting. Tra even traffic lights nowadays are dicks, yet alone people. We got to deal with people and supermarkets and all types of places, especially with everything going on. Tensions are high, and even the traffic lights are upset. Wait, wait. Now, I know you're supposed to have that. I get that you should have something like that in New York City or something where people are always going to be dicks and just constantly clicking that thing and won't be judged or judge the traffic light when it's a little rude to you. It gets all upset for you letting it know that you have to cross the street when it tells you to let them know. It's kind of like flight attendants on an airplane. If you click the request a flight attendant button up top, they get upset at you that you clicked it. You know what I mean? Especially if it's for something pretty stupid. It's like they have it there, but everybody knows just not to touch it. If you see the flight attendant come across, that's when you grab them. You imagine being blind going across one of these traffic lights? They have the countdown on the light, too, so the thing will be just telling you to walk. You're good to go, and all of a sudden, five, four, three, two, one, and it counts it down, too. You know what I mean? It's like you got the last jumper to win the game, like the clock's counting down. As soon as it hits zero, your time's done. You imagine being blind and just hearing that thing and thinking as soon as it hits zero, a car's just going to truck you over. It literally says out loud, Five, four, three, two, one, boom, and then you could be done. You just don't know. I feel bad. There's a lot of homeless people out in Los Angeles, and I'm watching them from afar, and it's giving them the light that they're good to go. You know, you see the little person walking, and all of a sudden, it's a quick 10-second countdown. So they got their carts filled like with all their bottles and everything. There's this homeless guy by me. His name is John. Everybody knows him. He's a very nice homeless guy. You know, there's mean homeless people. There's nice homeless people. John's one of those nice homeless people. And I'm at the light that I'm at every single day. And I know how quick this is. And I see John coming across with his cart. He's got all the empty bottles. You know, on trash day, that's where they really make their money is you can collect all the empty bottles. You recycle them. You get like 10 cents per bottle, something like that. Which, by the way, isn't a bad deal if you could find a lot of bottles. So I see John, I see John going across with his cart, which is not an easy thing to do. He's got bottles falling out of it. That's 10 cents. Can't lose a bottle. And I see him going across. I'm like, oh, geez, John has no idea that he really doesn't have much time to cross the street. That guy is bright right now. You could see he's telling John to cross, but John has no idea there's about to be a countdown. All of a sudden, boom, there it goes. Five, four. Three. I'm screaming across, you got to go, John. You got to go. John goes back for the bottle. He goes to grab his cart. He's got to book it over. He's got two little medians to pass before three, two, go, John. Go, John, you got to go. You got to go. It's a random Wednesday morning. I'm screaming at this homeless guy to run. It's a very scary thing. Now, I know there's a certain art to the traffic light, but you would think, in reality, when the clock hits zero, you still have, like, another 30, 45 seconds, but it makes you feel like you really only have five seconds left till you got a tractor trailer pulling through. So, with the, the process of the traffic light, you go, you click it if you need to cross, wait, wait, I'm waiting, sir. That already puts you in a bad mood. You're yeah, having a shitty morning. Now you're getting yelled at by a traffic light that's not even real. Wait, wait. Then it tells you to cross. Once you're crossing, you think you're good to go. All of a sudden, that hand comes blinking up. Now we have a countdown. And some of the traffic lights will let you know. So this one that John was going through goes five, four, three, 
two. John's just sliding in like he's sliding in the second base to get across, like he just stole second, back left corner of the bag, avoid the tag. Poor John. Nothing comes easy nowadays, folks. Not even crossing a traffic light. Wait. Wait. Any who. Folks, we are moving on. Well, folks, getting ready to close down here. Episode 96, the Burnley Dumb Show. But here on the Burnley Dumb Show, folks, we all know we don't close any episode without everybody's favorite segment. It's the Ass Bob segment week by week. Tuesday after Friday, Tuesday after Friday, I tell you fine folks, file on into the DMs, submit your questions to be featured for the Ask Bob segment, folks, when I tell you we have a doozy of a question on our hands today, I mean we have a doozy of a question here on our hands today. This is coming from a young man by the name of Hunter Diggins. My goodness, is this a doozy. From Beckley, West Virginia, Mr. Diggins would like to know, here it comes, hey, Bob, Wanted to see if you could give me some much-needed advice for this week's Ask Bob segment. My girlfriend's parents are divorced, and her dad is coming into town to see her. He means a lot to her, and I want to get his blessing to ask him to marry his daughter before I ask this spring. This would be the first time I meet her dad. When I asked him if we can meet up while he's in town separately, he responded with a tea time at a local golf course in West Virginia. Do I pop the question to him on the course? I, you, you know, Diggins, I got to be honest with you. I can't sugarcoat this. You have your hands full. Not only do you got to pop this question, at the same time, too, it's your introduction to the father. And you said it yourself, heard that it means a lot to her. It's not like he's that divorce then that kind of lost contact, calls once every month or so. It's a different ball game. So, so while you're also going for the approval just of, of her dad in general, it's got to be the approval to pop that type of question which is big. Now, my advice, what what I would do, I I wouldn't pop the question on the golf course being that it's your first time meeting them. I would not. I I wouldn't bring it up there. I, I would just solely focus on making sure that you get the approval from him first. If things go, if it gets taken to a 19th hole, you guys hit the clubhouse and things really crank it up a gear, by all means, pop the question. That's going to be a judgment call for sure. You got to make sure the guy likes you first before anything. You got four hours to do that. I say focus on that. Now, with that being said, Do not focus on your golf game at all. Do not even worry how you're playing, what your score is. To to be quite frank with you, Diggins, nobody gives a shit how you're playing. He doesn't care how you're playing. All he cares about is how he's playing. And if he's playing good, he's going to be in a good mood. You ever been on a golf course and you play with a guy who's just bringing nothing to the table for the first five holes because he's playing so shitty and he's just so inside his head and he's so upset with how he's playing that he cannot even have a good time. But he walks up to the six hole, hits a beautiful shot, and all of a sudden he wants to know where you work, what you do for a living, how long you've been living out here. All of a sudden he's talking your ear off. That's because he's now having a good time because he just hit a good shot and he's finding a groove. So what you need to do is make, by all means, you make sure that her dad is having a good time and playing some good golf. If there's a putt that's a little bit of a distance away, give him the putt, count it. Count it on the scorecard. By all means, if you happen to see his ball and it's got a bad lie and he's not at his ball, you kick that thing and put it on the fairway if you need to. Every bit of you should be focused to making sure that her dad is playing good golf. Because if he's playing good golf, all bets are off. Your personality is going to seem a lot better. You, you're going to look a lot better. If he's playing good golf, everything's going good. So if my man is three under through six, and you got to pop that question on the six hole, by all means, do it. But if he's not playing great golf, all you do is focus on you're doing the right things. Car girl comes by, offer him to pay a beer. Offer to pay a round. Do whatever you got to do. I would not pop the question if he's playing mediocre or bad golf. But on the rare occurrence that he's playing great golf, that he's just grooving, whether it's the front nine, back nine, three holes in, you ask the question then. 
and you get out. You get out on top. That's what you do. It's a great question there, Mr. Diggins, but that's the thing about golf, and it's so true. If you're playing good, that guy's having a great time. If, 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 if the person's playing good, they're having fun. They're talkative. They want to know about you. They, everything. If they're playing bad, forget about it. It's the lowest of the low. It's kind of like Cam Newton in a post-press game conference. Watch Cam Newton after one of – if his team loses, okay? If you're a reporter – And you're at this press conference and Cam Newton loses. You got to walk on eggshells for every single thing you said. Everything you said. Because anything you say, anything you ask can be turned around to a stupid question and now Cam can be mad at you. But if you look at Cam Newton after a good game and after a win, you could ask him anything. There's nothing off limits that you can't ask Cam. You can ask him, did you take money to have somebody do your SATs in high school, which is something that came up. You can ask him that type of question. And he would laugh it off. But you can't do that after a loss. And it's the same way type of in a golf game. If the guy's playing good, you could ask that guy anything you want. If he's playing bad, you better be very careful, very selective. So what I got to say to you, Hunter Diggins, if he goes two holes in, he's two under, can I marry your daughter right away? No doubt about it. Ask it. Because he's he's in the top. He he is as happy as he's going to be that round. If he's not playing good, wait till he plays good. And if he doesn't play good, you don't ask the question. Save it for another day. And then you'll always have in your back pocket the possibility of hitting that 19th hole, hitting the clubhouse, couple beers. You guys start clanging and banging. Next thing you know, then you can ask the question. So play it hole by hole. If he gets in a groove, pop the question. Phenomenal question there. To close off, episode 96 coming from Mr. Diggins. And you know what? I I hope he keeps us up to date on that. I really hope he follows through because I'm very curious to see how that dynamic goes. That, that's a tricky situation there, folks. Folks, new vlog out of me playing PGA 2K21. Bobby Fairways taking on Augusta is on the YouTube now. Please be sure to continue to rate, comment, subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts. Folks, we are moving and grooving. Jersey Jerry brought that action. As always, this is what we do here. This is what you get on the Berlin Dumb Show. Folks, we will see you Friday. You all take care now. Not today, Bubba. Go get him, Bubba. Love you. Not today, Bubba. Gordy. Gordy. Can I bother you for a second?